Hey, hey, welcome to the Foraging Forecast. Here we are at the end of April, just touching into May. And you might be wondering what is out and abundant that you can wildcraft your own food and medicine. That is the whole point and purpose of this series. And uh, yeah, it is just early spring. And if we take a look around, there's a whole lot of greenery right there. That's what we're gonna focus on right now today. Now that's not grass. This is kind of a low lying and spreading plant. That's in fact, you know, evergreen year round. So you can pick this in pretty much any uh, week or month of the year. But I think right now is especially a good time because, you know, there's not much a lot else available, but the fact that, you know, you can see that vibrancy of the green leaves coming through everything else. It's there. It's ready. It's got that optimum amount of energy, though it will produce fruits and flowers. We're not at that time of season yet. And in fact, it's the leaves that we're after. And I'm talking about uh, Arctostophilus uva ursi uh, bear berry, or as the herbalists like to call it, uva ursi. That name Arctos uh, from the Greek means bear and staphyles uh, describes, you know, little hanging bunches of grapes or berries and uva, ursi, ursi meaning bear and uh, uva is berries. Now let's get a nice little close up here for you. You can see how it's very low to the ground and it kind of spreads like a mat. And as we get even closer up to the plant, you know, there's the odd place where there's a nice little berry hanging right there. And if we were to kind of pick this plant and get up nice and close and really observe it, sometimes almost described as a bit of a, of a waxy type texture uh, to the leaves. It is definitely, you know, tougher than your average leaf. Any type of lookalikes for this type of plant and leaf that we're after uh, would be cranberry, which actually has almost identical properties. The leaves of cranberry are quite a bit smaller. So the uva ursi has larger leaves and it has larger berries, but they both have almost very similar leaves and uh, very similar red berries, which you can see kind of poking in there. Now, I'm in, you know, an urban environment. You can see houses, there's a fence right there, little path coming along. Now, I'm not personally gonna be picking here right now uh, because I, I know this area quite well and I walk through it almost every day. And uh, this particular area is a bit of a kind of a dog off leash. And uh, I do find a lot of dog poo around here. So I personally won't be picking and I recommend uh, that when you find this, you kind of move off the path and you pick in an area that you feel really comfortable about it being clean, you know, environmentally, uh, ideally maybe it's out of the city, but then also definitely away from uh, where dogs might be trampling on it. Now, let's get into its benefits, its properties. This is one of the absolute best plants for treating urinary tract infections. Its properties are des described as astringent, anti-inflammatory, nephritic, meaning that it can help with the inflammation specifically of the tubules of the, the kidneys. Uh, it's antiseptic and uh, it's one of its main compounds is called arbutin. And what this does is it helps, you know, cleanse, tonify, soothe, strengthen, sterilize the, uh, the urinary tract and the kidneys and bladder in general. Uh, arbutin, uh, through that kind of sterilization, it also helps uh, alkalinize uh, the urinary tract and it inhibits any of that gram-positive bacteria from growing. Uh, inside of you. So usually within a couple of hours of ingestion, you'll begin to notice uh, the results. And uh, anecdotally, I've never had a urinary tract infection, but I know many women that have had, uh, men too, and uh, using the uva ursi as a tea. It's the leaf specifically. The berry has its own properties and we'll focus on that in a future uh, video later into the season when those berries are kind of in their prime and they're optimal. 
but it's the leaves that we want uh, for preparing this tea for uh, treating the kidney and bladder. And uh, Robert Rogers, uh, I've heard him say that it's best prepared uh, as a cold extraction and consumed cool as well, right? So some of the herbal properties of different plants, let's say if it's like diaphoretic, which means it helps you sweat, you know, like drinking a, a cup of hot mint tea or, you know, elderflower or something like that. It's going to have more of an action of making you sweat. And as a cool tea of the uva ursi uh, increases the arbutin content uh, when it's prepared cold. So just put it in, you know, you would, uh, you know, kind of crush it up best you can, put it into cool water, and then you could give it a, a just kind of a light, you know, gentle warmth to help further extract, but let it sit overnight. And then drinking that cool, it's gonna make sure that it goes straight through uh, the urinary system the kidneys the bladder and it has that sterilizing effect like i say i've heard so much good feedback uh, from people that have consumed this that it really really works um, it, it's also very astringent because it's got a very high tannin content now astringency is that kind of tightening and toning of tissues now that can have benefits internally but also this plant was used uh, to you know help toughen up feet as an example right the idea of tannins like tanning hides they would use this as part of their solution to tan a hide but they would also use it uh, to you know toughen up their feet you can do this as a hiker soak in your feet in uh you know the the tea and for this preparation you'd want to use a, a strong decoction so kind of simmer it and then that will help pull more of the tannic content out uh, versus the cooler extraction for the arbutin you can soak your feet in it for like an hour and it just helps kind of like tighten and tone those tissues of your skin so if you're hiking and you want to kind of help prevent get blisters or you're like a barefoot walker like me the beginning of the season you know your feet in that kind of a bath will help toughen them up and you can kind of tan your own feet uh, to be more resilient as you walk through the landscape with bare feet. The other application is uh, can be used for sits baths, right, post birth. Again, to kind of tighten, tone, bring those tissues back together. Uh, the contraindication with this one is if you're pregnant, uh, you wouldn't want to consume this. And uh, there is some evidence that uh, it's also good for relieving menstrual cramps as well. So it's a good one. It's available year round. It's easy to identify, very easy to pick. I mean, you can just see all that greenery that you see, that is purely the uva ursi, the bearberry. Nothing else is green yet in the landscape. You'll find this in the city. You'll find it out of the city, especially in the kind of... Um, foothills into the mountain regions uh, absolutely abundant uh, again later in the season we'll talk about uh, the berries and uh, their use and edibility and uh, yeah how they can uh, help you whether you're on a hike or you're like a bear <laughs> there's another uh, reason why this uh, plant is called the bear berry so anyways one well, other point of note about this uh, plant is that another common name is kinnikinnik, and that often refers to a smoking mixture, and uh, of which the uva ursi, the bearberry, was one that was used in those smoking mixtures. Now that would be prepared by drying it. Uh, you put it near a fire, somewhere where it's kind of like dry right out, even brown, and then you break that up, and then you can put it with your other herbs that you're smoking. So Kinnikinnik, you might come across that name and wonder what that connection is and uh, how it might be used in smoking. It apparently produces kind of a lightheaded uh, sensation, maybe kind of similar to, to tobacco, but it's definitely a, an herb that was smoked as well as drank and applied top. Arctostaphylus uver ursi, bear berry. 
you like this, this is uh, the second video we put out for the foraging forecast. This is a monthly subscription where you can get weekly videos from myself and Denis as we move through the season. You can join anytime and we'll be out there making these videos, creating these emails to let you know what you can harvest, when, what are the lookalikes, what are the cautions, considerations, ideas for preparation, and man, week to week, month to month, you're going to learn about dozens and dozens of wild edible species. We're going to be highlighting them both in the city, out of the city, in uh, rural, urban, and wild landscapes. And I hope you'll join us. We've made this super, super accessible, nine bucks a month. And uh, yeah, again, you're going to get to know dozens and dozens of plants throughout the year. So lightseller.ca is where you can learn more and register and love to have you join us for this adventure.